Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Winnie. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. Now, for those of you that are new to our channel, we are doctors, but we like to dabble a little bit in comedy, which is a lot safer than the other way around, because you wouldn't want a comedian that dabbles a bit in surgery. Kevin Hart is not doing your surgery. You don't want Zach Galifianakis taking out your appendix. No. So today we're talking about something really important. Like all of our videos, we feel like they're all really important. We're talking about vitamin B12, or cobalamin. Okay, B12. This is a popular topic right now. A lot of people are wondering about their B12 levels. Right. And should we worry about it or is it just hype? So spoiler alert, I think most people probably should take B12 supplements. So we're going to okay. talk a little bit. So Thanks it's called, for watching. The video's <laughs> over. It's we called, save that till the end. It's called cobalamin because it's made of cobalt. That's how bacteria make this B12. And Wait, did you say bacteria make it? Bacteria, microbes. Microbes make the bacteria. So what does it do? So B12 is really important for a bunch of different things. In the formation of red blood cells, as well as formation of our DNA, which literally is our intrinsic structure, as well as any brain and nerve cell. So if you have a deficiency, it's gonna cause lots of different symptoms. Blood, brain, DNA, you right. need it. So some of the symptoms that you can get if you have a B12 deficiency include weakness, fatigue, mm. nausea, mm. weight loss, Irritability. Hurry up. How many of these are there? And elevated heart rate. So it's a great masquerader. So they're kind of vague, common symptoms that be caused by lots of things, but they're all related to your B12 level. Okay. So these are the symptoms. Right. That if you can tell they're not, it's not one specific thing. So many people are, can be, and actually are walking around with deficiencies in B12 because these symptoms are so vague and attributable to many other causes as well. Right. So how are you going to know if you're B12 deficient? Obviously, you can have these symptoms. The only thing that causes this is not B12 though. So you can measure your B12 level and this is one way to do it, but it's not totally reliable. There have been good studies to show that some people can have a normal B12 level, but can have what's called a functional deficiency. So B12 is important in regulating a couple other substances. So methylmalonic acid and homocysteine. And homocysteine very specifically is related to an increased risk of stroke. So the way our body regulates the amount of homocysteine, if we don't do it properly, it can increase our risk of stroke. And as you know, a stroke is basically when the brain does not get enough oxygen or blood supply and part of it infarcts or dies a little bit and that gives you a neurologic symptom. Right, so if you get special testing of those two levels, it can show you that you have what's called a functional deficiency. And this is something that's better to do ahead of time rather than waiting for you to have a full bone deficiency. It's important for us to be supplemented and properly measured to protect us from these events rather than reacting to them. Okay, now, yeah. bro. I've bro. watched all our videos. Okay. And so I've decreased the amount of meat I eat, but I still eat a little bit of meat. Right. Uh, and I do eat a lot of vegetables. Yes. Uh, so I'm okay, right? I don't have to worry about it. Maybe not. Okay, so who is B12 deficient or who should consider um, have being tested and potentially being supplemented? So for sure, all vegans and vegetarians. So like you. you. Yes, yeah, so yes, I'm a plant-based eater. So if you are not eating a regular amount of meat, so even a flexitarian, someone that's having meat once or twice a week has a high chance of being B12 deficient. So anyone in that group, so that's number one. Number two, people that have had bariatric surgery. Because of where B12 is absorbed, it's absorbed in your small intestine. As it comes into our mouths, it gets broken down by the stomach acid, and then it binds to something called intrinsic factor, and then gets bound up in our small intestine. So if you have an abnormal small intestine, or you have had bariatric surgery that reduces this ability, you also are at risk. So that's number two. Bariatric surgery is a surgical procedure for people who have, uh, are overweight and having a difficult time losing weight, a surgical intervention called bariatric surgery, which deals with the stomach and the small intestine yes. to modify the amount of food that you take in. Right. Okay. So number three is people that are middle-aged like us. So there's good evidence to show that over 50, our ability to absorb B12 starts to significantly go down. And then after 65, it goes down even more. So if you're young like us, uh -huh. over 50 or over 65, you definitely should be considering B12 supplementation. Okay, okay, so now we talk about where do we get it? Okay, meat. We alert, we alluded to that already. Right. And you know, many of our videos say cut back on red meat. However, meat is a good source of B12. So this is a shout out to all of our carnivore viewers who really love our channel and complain a lot about our plant-based suggestions. So here you get a tick mark carnivore. 
It is not enough of a tick, though, to recommend it, and generally because of the other risk factors associated with increased animal product consumption. And, of course, the chicken wing, known to be... Yeah, so poultry is not a reliable source of B12. Not enough of it, anyway. Okay, so fortified foods. So you've probably seen around uh, fortified cereals, fortified plant-based milks, and even nutritional yeast is actually a very, very good source. So if you got this reliably and regularly, it potentially could provide you with enough. But, but there may not be enough in There that may not be enough. Yes, exactly. So often it'll talk about the RDA, but even that, by the time it gets broken down and it actually gets absorbed, it's probably not enough. What about a supplement? Pill, okay. pill for every ill. Right. So all of a sudden the alarms for Big Pharma is coming off of some of our viewers right now. So. Vitamin supplements are really important, but you don't have to take very many of them. We talked about before, vitamin D is probably something everybody should take. B12 is probably on that list. There are two main types of vitamin B12. So there's methylcobalamin and cyanocobalamin. Methylcobalamin is much more expensive and the molecule is slightly different, but there's good evidence to show that cyanocobalamin is the cheapest and probably the most reliable form. So you don't have to get the expensive one. And there's two because if you finally figured out how to pronounce one, they throw another one at you to start learning how to pronounce as well. Right, so like we were talking about before we started filming, can you just take this pill, pop it, swallow it down with a glass of water and be good? You actually cannot because it will not adequately be absorbed. So you have to either chew it or put it under your tongue so that the acids in your mouth have time to break it down so that it can be bound up by that little intrinsic factor and then readily uptake. And that's the cool thing about digestion. It actually starts in the mouth. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Okay, last, people are gonna ask, how much should I take? How much B12 should I take? So we're gonna break it down into either a daily dose yep. or if you're not so good at taking or a pill a day or remembering to take something once a day, you can take it weekly. Right, so this is in micrograms. So the daily recommended microgram dose is 50 to 100 micrograms. Okay. Every and single day. And if you're gonna take it weekly. It's, it's 1,000 to 2,000. It's 1,000 to 2,000. Which interestingly, if you do the right. math, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Cause you're like, well, if it's 50 to 100 a day times you seven days, days week, that's only uh, 350 to yeah. 700. Now you all got to 2000, how come? Carry the one. It's probably because when you take it as one large dose, there's a higher chance that some of it's not gonna be absorbed. There you go. Okay, so now that you're overwhelmed by B12, the take home message is B12 is really important. Deficiency is very serious and cause potentially life-threatening strokes because of the homocysteine. And the symptoms are vague. They can vague. be attributable to a lot of other things. Vague. So if you are not confident that you're getting in your diet, which a lot of people aren't. Oh, the last thing is, you know, why? Why is it a problem? Because we clean everything now. Even our water is chlorinated. And the little bacteria that used to live in our water provided us with B12 or the ability to make B12. And, and now we don't have that anymore. So we have less cholera. Mm -hmm. Good but, thing. But we have less B12. So Bad thing. this is part of the thing. So if you're not getting your food, definitely consider a supplement and definitely chew it, put it in your tongue, do not swallow it. Well, uh, I'm exhausted. I have all the symptoms of B12 deficiency right now. I'm, my heart rate's up. I'm nauseous. Okay. okay, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health and your own B12 level. We'll see you next time.